Welcome to the Cayman Islands, a tropical paradise renowned for its pristine beaches, crystal clear waters, and rich biodiversity. Today, we dive into the fascinating world of bats, the unsung heroes of these beautiful islands. Bats, often misunderstood and shrouded in myths, play a vital role in maintaining the delicate balance of the Cayman Islands ecosystem. What do you think is the cutest thing about Batilda? Um, I think their face is the cutest. I think it's the cutest too. Yeah. You know any cool bat facts? Bats are not there, no. So they like to party at night? Yes. <laughs> Here in the Cayman Islands, you can find several bat species, each with its own unique characteristics and importance. So Charlie, do you know what importance fruit-eating bats have to the ecosystem? To spread seeds. Yeah. And how do they do that? By eating the plants and fertilization of the seeds. <laughs> yep. Our batillo makes a lot of poop, doesn't she? Yes. <laughs> and they do that when they're flying around, and so they spread a lot of seeds. When they are flying around at night, they are pooping around. They are spreading what is called nitrogen into the soil. Caymans, it has a lot of karst, which is limestone. That's not very nutrient rich. And so plants really need and depend on bats guano to fertilize them so they can keep growing. So bats are a huge source of nitrogen for these plants. And a lot of plants depend on them, not just for pollination, for actual food source. Cool. It's called Phyllostomidae, and they have a leaf nose. What do you think that leaf is used for? Smelling fruits. Kind of. You know what it also does that's really cool? Echolocation. Yeah, it helps direct the noises she makes so that when it bounces off things, she has a more precise location of where it is. How do they not fly into us? So bats are very sensitive creatures. They rely on echolocation. So you'll hear every so often them screech or peep or click. That's, uh, that's actually how they emit the sound. And that sound bounces off of you, and comes back to them. They hear it with their ears. They sense it in their body and the fur and their whiskers and everything. And they are able to know that you're there. They also have their eyes. They're not blind. They can actually see very well. They are adapted for the dark. So they can see you when it's very dark in the cave there, they can see you still. All of these things are so that they can hunt, especially when they're insectivorous bats. They're able to, you know, chase after a little moth in the sky, they're going to zoom past it, they're going to use their echolocation, they're going to use their hearing, the, the beat pattern from the moth's wings, they know what that is and they're going to go right after it. What does Batilda like to eat? Fruit. Fruit? What's she's, your... a, she's a fruit bat. Yeah. What's she been eating here? Um, bananas and guava. What other kind of bats are there on the island? Velvet pill. Yeah. Do you bats. know, what do you think they eat? What about other things that fly? Mosquitoes. Yeah, they eat lots of insects. So mosquitoes, which are horrible here sometimes, bats help us out with those. And they also eat lots of things like moths and other things that are crop pests. How good is that? Bats are often associated with caves, and the Cayman Islands are home to breathtaking cave systems that provide sanctuary for these remarkable creatures. How do bats communicate? With their voices. And a lot of times when they're echolocating, their pitch is too high for us to hear. But when they're talking to each other, sometimes I definitely hear them, especially when they're having little arguments up in their roosts. You stepped on me. So one of the major projects that we are doing in the Department of Environment is actually mapping all the caves like this one in the Cayman Islands. We are trying to conserve these unique habitats. And really, the cave ecology is unique in every cave. So we must conserve as many as we can find. It's uh, very interesting. It makes them very precious too, because if we lose a couple bats, that takes a long time to kind of replenish that population as they only have a couple of kids a year. So there's the Buffy flower bat, which uh, is another cave dweller and cavity dweller. But as the name suggests, they actually frequent flowers. They are another pollinator. We have specific flowers that are actually adapted for those bats to pollinate. And so what they do, they don't actually eat the flowers, they actually go and drink the nectar from the flowers. And another bat that also does this is the Antillian nectar bat. They also go around and pollinate flowers as well. 
We know that they're a key species of interest. That's why the national conservation law puts bats as a part one protected species, meaning that they have full coverage of the law. No one is allowed to harm bats, it is illegal. But we do understand that bats and people will interact. It's gonna happen. And as a result, we do work with the National Trust to provide an exclusion program between the months of November to June. That exclusion program is to help move the bats out of people's homes or attics when the bats are not giving birth to babies. I've learned so much, but how do we help? You guys can join our citizen science program at the Department of Environment. It's called Bat Count Came In, and we count bats every summer. We go out between the hours of 6.30 to about 7.30, and we have mapped across the island several bat houses that are publicly accessible. And you can go out and count them, and that gives us valuable information about how the bat population is doing in the Cayman Islands. As we conclude our journey through the enchanting world of Cayman Islands bats, let us pause to appreciate the incredible significance of these remarkable creatures. Bats are nature's unsung heroes, vital to our ecosystem and our very existence. We extend our deepest gratitude to all those who joined us in this exploration and to those dedicated to bat conservation. Your efforts are essential. With every passing night, there is hope. Hope that these incredible beings will continue to thrive, ensuring a balanced and harmonious planet for generations to come. Thank you for being a part of this journey. Let's stand together for the preservation of these extraordinary creatures and the world that they call home.